Welcome back to all this math. Today we are doing Eureka Math, Grade 1, Module 1, Lesson 18. With the, it's not up there, but with the commutative property. Come on. Alright, so as Asada said, and this is Professor Parker with my FAMU Florida A&M University sweatshirt on, um, located in Tallahassee, Florida. Tallahassee, Florida, which is actually the state capital, state capital of Florida. So, so they, they got a nice campus. But anyway, um, commutative property. It's a very important concept. It helps us. It's, a, it's basically a, a math hack or like a cheat code for math. It makes math easier. And I'm going to show you through some of these examples with these number bonds behind me, right, how we use it. So first of all, think of it like this. So I am me and this is Asada. I am one person. Asada is one person. So we know that one plus one equals two. Now, let's switch places. So now, notice how we just switch places, right? I am here now. She is over there now. We switch places. But there still are two people in total, myself and Asada. There's still two of us, right? So this is essentially what the commutative property means is that when you change the order of the numbers, it does not change the result of the addition problem. Instead of saying numbers, we could say add-ins. Add-ins is a word to describe the numbers that get added together in a math problem or a number sentence. Or sum-ands. Sum-ands, add-ins are the numbers that get added together. So it doesn't matter. It might change in a word problem. There is a difference, right? But in terms of what the final result is or the sum, it will not change the sum. Changing the order of the numbers will not change the sum. So basically, Asada, what she's going to do is describe some of these number bonds, and then she's going to write two different number sentences based on the information in the number bonds. So Asada, you see the number bond, you see nine, you see five, you see four. So what would your first number sentence be? You want me to write it down while I'm saying it? Sure. All right. Uh, five plus four equals nine okay so she took these two add-ins the five and the four are add-ins and the nine is the sum and this is our number bond and also parents if you're watching this and you're wondering why your children are using number bonds one reason for them using number bonds and one reason why i'm glad that asada was exposed to this when she was a little younger is because it prepares your child for chemistry a lot of students when they get to chemistry class in high school um, in like 10th grade usually, or even if they take it in ninth grade, or some might take it in 11th. Some schools might be a little advanced and start introducing those concepts in 7th or 8th grade, which is even better. The earlier, the better. A lot of students are uncomfortable with chemistry because they have to start dealing with molecules and breaking the molecules into different bonds, into atoms and moles and all that type of stuff, and they've never seen that before. But at least this way, if your child's in first grade, they've already seen number bonds. So they're already a little bit more comfortable with it by the time they see it later on. All right? So this is one number sentence. What's another number sentence you could write using the commutative property? Four plus five equals nine. So notice what happened. The add-ins are four and five. Whether you write the five first and the four second, or whether you write the four first and the five second, you're still going to get nine. You're still going to get nine, regardless. It doesn't matter, right? Now, as I said, if this were representing information from a word problem, then the order might make a difference in terms of what's happening in the original word problem. But in terms of the final result or the sum, it does not make a difference. It doesn't affect the final result. So changing the order can be helpful at times, or maybe even if it's not helpful, if you just want to be different and just write the write this add-ins in a different order, that's fine too. You can do that, all right? Now, let's go into the next example where we have another number bond, where we have the two add-ins are eight and two, and the sum is 10. What's one number sentence you would write? Two plus eight equals ten. That's how you know nobody writes their ones like that in real life, right? You know that, right? That's only in like, you know, on TV, right? Nobody actually writes ones like that. <laughs> it makes my writing look fancy. Anyway, all right, 
So you take the add-ins, 2 and 8, and you add them up, and you get 10, right? Now, what's another way she could express this? What's another way? 8 plus 2 equals... There she go. 10. These fancy Hollywood ones again. All right, so look, let me let me pause for a moment and focus in on like why this is very significant. One of the reasons that the commutative property, I actually should write that down, commutative, right? The commutative property is helpful. C-O-M-M-U-T, excuse my handwriting. Commutative property is helpful is for situations like this, right? So, you know, young children sometimes, they haven't memorized their addition facts yet. They haven't memorized off the top of their head that 8 plus 2 is 10 and that 2 plus 8 is 10. They haven't memorized that yet. So young, young people oftentimes are still counting with their fingers. Now, if they're using the um, add-on or count-on method of adding, what they might do if they see 2 plus 8 and they're trying to figure out the sum of that is they start out with two fingers, right? Well, actually, I should say two fingers, and then they have to count on eight more. And they go... Uh, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And it could get confusing, right? It could get confusing because there's a lot going on. It's a lot of fingers that are up in the air and they got to remember, you know, and where they started from and how many fingers are up and how many fingers they got to put up. And then if they're in class, they might get distracted. Somebody might be making noise. Somebody might be distracting them or bothering them or something. It's a whole lot of opportunities to get a wrong answer. So where the commut commutative property comes into play and helps us is this. Instead of doing 2 plus 8, you can just switch the numbers around and do 8 plus 2. If you do 8 plus 2 and then you do the count on method, now you're starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. You're starting with 8 fingers, right? Right? You start with 8 fingers and you only got to add 2 more to get to your sum, right? You already got 8 fingers, right? Or you can just think of it as like you don't got to put the 8 fingers up. You just say, okay, in my mind, I got 8, right? And I know I got to put up two fingers. I got eight already, right? I got eight already, and I got to put up two fingers. So I'm doing, I'm here with it. Nine, ten. Boom. Two fingers, I stopped at ten. So therefore, the sum is ten. That's a lot easier than, you know, again, counting with your fingers, right? You start with two. In your mind, you got two, right? And then you got to count eight. Okay, I got two. Now I got three, four, five, six, seven. It's just a whole lot. It's a whole lot. So in order to reduce some confusion, until the students memorize their addition facts, use the commutative property. Because with the commutative property, you could put the big number first. If you put the big number first, you actually have less numbers to add. So if you start with a small number, you got a lot of numbers to add. But if you start with the big number, you got less numbers to add. So that's why the commutative property is helpful, right? So when we're introducing these concepts and these terms and these properties and rules in math, we want to always make sure we understand, like, what's the point? How does this help me? How is this going to benefit me? So this is a very clear example of how the commutative property is going to help us. And you'll be introduced to other properties, like the associative property, the distributive property. It's a lot of properties in math, and especially when you get to algebra. But you can use them in arithmetic as well. A lot of times, unfortunately, these properties don't get even get introduced until algebra. But you can use them in arithmetic, like right here, right? Instead of doing 2 plus 8 to get 10, you can do 8 plus 2 to get 10. All right? Um, let's do some more examples. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase this and erase this and erase this, erase this, erase this, erase this, erase that, 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 erase your fancy ones, erase that, erase that, erase that. All right, and I'm going to write, oh, okay, these are a little different. So these are a little different. So with these, we don't know the sum. All right, so we got 7 and 1. All right, and then we got, uh, let me see, 6 and 2. All right, all right, Sada, you're up. Now with this one, we have two add-ins. We don't know the sum. So you have to tell, so you have to write two number sentences and also write the sum. Alright. <clears throat> 
eight. Okay. Now, Sada has her addition facts memorized, so that's why she knows it's eight. But again, if you were counting with your fingers, right, and let's say in your mind you already know you have seven, and then you have to add one, so you put one finger up. So you already have seven, and then you go one finger, you go eight. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. Seven, eight. One finger. Seven, eight. It doesn't matter which finger, right? Seven, eight. You put one finger up, and now you're at eight, right? It's called the count on method. The count on method. All right? Now, what's the, but what's another way to write this? Now, to write the yes, please. Now, this is very valid, right? But why why would we do this, right? This again, this would be confusing. It could be confusing, could be confusing for young children if you start out with the smaller number. So you start out with one, and then you gotta count on with seven fingers. You start out with one, and you gotta count on with seven fingers, right? It's a lot going on. It's a lot of opportunities to make a mistake, and we want to minimize even the opportunity to make mistakes. All right. Next example, this will be our last example. All right, so we got the sum of six. One of our add-ins is two. We don't know what the other add-in is. And another thing, if I could just add that oftentimes the word algebra is scary, right? We think that we don't do algebra until later, like middle school or high school. But this is algebra right now, right? This was algebra. Anytime you're figuring out an unknown value, you're doing algebra. So first graders, you're doing algebra. Kindergarten, you're doing algebra. Anytime you're figuring out an unknown numerical value, you're doing algebra. Even if we don't call it X or we don't call it Y or Z, we're doing algebra. So we should be thinking about that. All right. So that should show us that algebra is not that hard if we're doing algebra in the first grade. All right. So now we have one add end or sum end. We're missing one add end or sum end. We know the sum. So what will one of your number sentences be? Two plus four equals six. Okay. Now she figured out, she knew that two plus blank equals six. So the blank, the missing number must be four. So two plus four is going to be six, right? Uh, what's another way to write it? Using a commutative property. What's another way to write this sentence? Four plus two equals six. Another way to write it. So again, in summary, the commutative property, all you're doing is switching the order of the numbers. That's all you're doing. You're switching the order of the numbers, right? Switching the order of the numbers will not affect your final result. It will not affect your sum. You will have the same sum. And because you know you'll have the same sum, that means that in the event that you have a very small number as your first add-in, you can switch and a larger number as your second add-in, you can switch the order around to make the math easier when you're using the count on method. So then, of course, this is all until, as young people, students, until you memorize your addition facts. Once you memorize your addition facts, then you don't need to do this, right? Because you're already going to know from memory that 7 plus 1 is 8. You're going to know from memory that 1 plus 7 is 8. You're going to know from memory that 1 plus 9 is 10. You're going to know all that from memory. So once you know it from memory, now you don't need to use properties like the commutative property to make the counting addition more easy, all right? So that's about it. Um, remember, go get some practice with these. Shout out to FAMU, Florida A&M University. Shout out to all the HBCUs, historically black colleges and universities. Asada, you got anything to say to the people? Um, hope this helped y'all. Hope this helped y'all too. See you later. Peace.